if you would be so kind, would you mind introducing yourself for the podcast? Yeah, my name is Dan Sefcik. I play guitar in Bone Church, and I write a lot of the songs, the lyrics. And how would you describe the music of Bone Church? Uh, the the idea behind it is just, I guess, uh, blues-inspired rock and roll. And what it, what I think is what differentiates rock and roll from metal, I think a lot of people call a stoner metal. I don't really consider a stoner metal. I, I think uh, the goal is just to write like rock and roll. And I think that the main difference to me between those two is that you can still hear the blues in rock. So that's kind of the idea behind the band, just to, uh, to write heavy rock and roll that is also, you know, we want to have fun. I feel like a lot of bands want to be like as heavy as they possibly can, or they want to be like as dark or as ominous as they can. Uh, I think like the subject matter lyrically and thematically, it's all, we just love horror, occult stuff, spooky stuff, the same stuff that we've loved forever. So that's kind of the idea. We wanted to set that lyrically and thematically over not just dark, heavy music, but also fun music. That's why we play fast songs too. And we just don't want to just play like long, doom songs and they come out long sometimes now you drew a distinction between your music and your blues inspired style with heavy metal but to be fair it seems like a lot of metal bands you know particularly classic 70s metal bands are a big influence on your your songwriting would that be fair to say oh yeah absolutely that's basically all all it is there's very few modern bands i feel like that that uh influence our sound let's talk about the history of the band a little bit when did you guys form and what brought you together the band was formed officially in 2016 we tried to actually start it in like 2011 actually i'll I'll give you the, the the full story the idea of the band came uh i went on a trip with my friend to europe and we wanted to go to a bone church there we we were like backpacking from italy to germany and prague and uh we just couldn't find time to go to one and we just kept talking about like oh dude we got to go to the bone church we got to go to a bone church and because we knew there were a bunch and there was one in Rome, the Capuchin Crypt, we didn't get to go to. Then actually the Sedlak Ossuary is the one in Prague, which is where our trip ended. But this is in 2010. So like we didn't have access to the Internet on our phones because we had to buy like a data plan. We didn't do that. So I, we didn't know that there was one in Prague right where we were. So anyway, the idea came from, I just kept talking about like, oh, we got to, well, I want to go to this bone church. I want to go to a bone church. We didn't get to go. But while I was there, I was like, I got a, a, a rock and roll band called Bone Church. And uh, I came back and, I, and we planned on meeting up. And the day he was supposed to come over, I plugged my amp in and it was dead. So I called him and I was like, dude, I'm sorry we are going to have to reschedule. And then this is true. This is ridiculous. We did not talk to each other again for five years, which seems insane, but (laughs) that's what happened. 2016, I got some, I was making synth stuff before that, like John Carpenter-esque synth stuff just for fun. And then I realized, well, I can start working on Bone Church stuff for real now. So I, I'd made two demo songs and I contacted him a few months later, might've been about six months later almost. And, uh, I was like, Hey man, I have like, I have these two songs. Are you interested? And he called me back that night at like midnight when he got out of work and he was like, I'm in. 
and then and then that was it from that point and that was in june of 2016 before we go any further we should explain to any listener who doesn't know what you mean by a bone church the place that people refer to as the bone church is actually called sedlak ossuary and it's in prague and it is a old church it's a catholic church and it is decorated with actual human bones and skulls i mean it's and it's not just like a few places it's like the whole entire interior of this church the altar there's a chandelier there's like a huge decoration on the wall it's it's everywhere it's like from floor to ceiling it's it's all skulls and bones and it's like actually beautiful it looks like incredible it's it's like a lot of of talent and craftsmanship went into making it but there's obviously like a lot of dark sinister history behind how and why that happened so that was the idea of uh naming the band bone church i just thought it was like this you know it's just sick it's like the coolest thing i could think of so that's what it's named after not that one specifically just the idea of a church you just said you don't consider Bone Church a metal band, but I have to say both the idea and the name Bone Church are incredibly metal. Oh, it's it's super metal. I, uh, if someone considers us a metal band, I I have no qualms with that. That's I can see why they would, and we probably are. Yeah, we we probably are a metal band. I think just the the goal is not to write heavy metal in my eyes uh because i think we do some stuff that a metal band necessarily wouldn't do or might not do uh which is just like the that blues element right so how clear of an idea of what kind of music you wanted to make did you have when you first formed the band yeah i think the the you know we we wear our influences on our sleeves I think pretty apparent who our main influences are. It's Black Sabbath, it's Zeppelin, Skinner, Peter Green's Fleetwood Mac, inspired by them, uh, If They Float, ZZ Top, some Queen. There's some Metallica influence in there. Essentially, every band is, um, yeah, from the 70s. It was, what would this band have sounded like if we were around at that like early proto metal era or just that explosion of all these blues rock bands really is what they were. I mean, Led Zeppelin was Sabbath, same thing, Jimi Hendrix, they were all playing the blues as their foundation, but pushing it in a much heavier, more aggressive direction. So that that's where, uh, you know, I just figured we, we, I needed to make my own band, do writing and playing my favorite music. So that's, that's what we settled on. So there was really no question about what it would sound like or what direction it would go. That was always there from the start.
This past Friday, March 13th, you released Acid Communion, which... How would you compare Acid Communion to your previous release? I think this is a little... I think the songwriting has, has been kicked up a notch. Really, every aspect of it, I think, is elevated on this album. Songwriting, the uh, lyrical content... Just the way the whole album flows, it's probably a little darker than the uh, than the EP. It's a little creepier. I don't think it's heavier, but heavy isn't really a concern. I just want to write good songs. Our goal is just to write the best song we can. Uh, I don't really want to get bogged down in thinking, is this heavy enough or is it, you know are the guitars fuzzy enough or distorted enough? The tone is really just our amps. I play a, a 76 JMP Marshall and not much going on as far as tone wise to get the, uh, the guitar tone. We use some pedals here and there, but it's really nothing crazy. 
Where was the album recorded? Uh, this album was recorded at Studio Wormwood by Dave Kaminsky, and that's in Manf- Mansfield, Connecticut, which is about an hour north of us. And he did a killer job. Right when we met with him, he sat down with us, and he was like, we just could tell he, he understood what we wanted to do and that it was important to capture the songs the way they sound when we play them live, really. What we really didn't want to do was sit down and play to a metronome or play to a click track. To, in my opinion, a lot of records come out feeling very stiff when you do that. So our approach was we were just going to play the song straight through as a band and capture every song as one performance and then go back through and do guitar overdubs and vocals that way so it was like it's one song it's one performance and every song is like that why did you choose to work with dave we still hadn't really dialed in the sound that we wanted on our first ep and we heard a recording our friends in in pentogram Another band from New Haven, awesome, similar to us, like Southern blues rock, but they're heavy. They recorded their EP with Dave. And for me personally, I think the the way the drums sound on a record is like the most important thing. If the record has like, like I said before, quantized drums, drums to a click track, that can make it feel very stiff if the drums are drum replaced. It, you know, I want to hear a drum set in a room recorded. I don't want anything replaced on it. I don't want to hear like a loud cracking snare because it was pulled from some sample or something. I want to hear the, the drum set and their drums on that sounded incredible. So I talked to our, my friend Andre from Pentogram and I asked him where they recorded and he said he told me studio wormwood dave and i think i called him like the next day and that's really where it came from so as you mentioned this album is being released by ripple music how did you get involved with ripple i think initially you know we we recorded a demo of acid communion it didn't have all the songs on it it had four songs back in december of 2018 and we sent out you know, uh, different labels sent it out to, but I think Ripple was was a label we were always kind of looking at. They have, you know, they had great bands on it, and they've been around for years now, and the name just kept coming up. And we reached out to them, I think, probably around the same time, maybe in January of last year, and talked with Todd over there and sent him the demo and he really liked it. And so we were kind of going back and forth a few times with them, but there's really not much more to it. We just, we, we thought they would be a great fit for us. And uh, I guess they felt the same and to have our album out on Ripple. How do you feel you relate to the other bands on the label? There's a ton of good bands that we'd like to play with and tour with. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, a. I don't, I don't know what else to say about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, just in terms of the style of music that you play, you know, slow, bluesy, heavy, but not necessarily metal kind of music, it feels like th- that's, that's Ripple's niche. And so like within that roster, as you said, there are a lot of bands that you can do splits with, there are a lot of bands that you can do tours with. Yeah. It seems like a, a good place for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... I also feel like it's good time, you know, at times to to play with bands that aren't necessarily that similar to you, you know, that but are just good. Like our, our friends in Void Vader from L.A., they're on Ripple, and they just rip. They're great players. They they shred. But it's a, it's clearly it's a different type of metal than we play. But that's like a band I would love to play with. You know, I'd love to go on tour with those guys. I think sometimes it's kind of weird when two bands sound like very similar if if they're on tour together. But I'd be happy to tour with any of the bands from the label.
Going back to the album, uh, what can you tell me about the lyrical themes? So a lot of the lyrics are, it's pretty, it's all, it's all occult based stuff. And the idea behind the album was to kind of have them be like little stories that all take place in the same world, which was like a, we're from New England. And I just wanted to sing about kind of New England based themes um so there's a there's there's two different songs about uh witches or witchcraft on the album really every basically every song takes place in the same um made up new england colonial era village and it's kind of every song is from a different character's perspective So like Witch in the Cellar, for example, is about a guy that is under the spell of a witch, which is 
obviously like you know it's it's a metaphor for for a love song really bone church blues is about a guy that is just so down on his luck his life is just so shitty that he stumbles across the bone church and unwittingly becomes a member and begins worshiping satan basically which he finds out towards the end of the song Iron Temple, it's another one that's about the basically the re, someone realizing that the bone church, the church in the town is a satanic cult and he's kind of trying to warn other people in the town. So like th- there it's all about the same in my mind when I was writing all of it, it all took place in the same fictional little village. Now you mentioned horror earlier in our in our conversation. Are these stories influenced by any horror, either movies or books? I think a lot of what I just find cool is influenced by horror movies, basically that I have loved since I was a kid. I know everyone else in the band pretty much we all align on that same thing um we just love horror movies i i I don't know if there's any specifically that have influenced the record uh it's just more of an idea i think more folk folk horror is is where the the influence lies um if i could think of one movie that would have influenced it it would be the witch which was came out i don't know four years ago maybe i think it was 2016 came out um, that movie kind of sums up the the theme of of the album, w- where it would take place, the period of, of which it would take place in. So, before I let you go, tell me what's next for Bone Church. What do you have planned? So we have our album release show planned for April 11th um, at State House in New Haven. Don't know if it's going to happen because of all this uh, pandemic craziness going on right now. Hopefully it does. Assuming that that it goes through, that's April 11th. In mid-May, we have the New England Stoner and Doom Fest, which is sick. I mean, this is the third year in a row we, we, we're going to play it. And there's just so many good bands from really all over now. Uh, when it started, I think it was more like new england region but now bands are coming from like pretty far to play it we're playing on friday the 15th and we we actually have nothing planned after that we were looking to to plan a tour for uh like july august uh i don't know if that's going to happen now i think everything's very up in the air unfortunately so to speak right yeah we're, we're doing a we're planning on doing a tour late summer early early fall now the new Bone Church album is called Acid Communion. It's out now through Ripple Music. How can people order the album? You can go on Ripple's site and it'll link you to their Big Cartel page. And uh, you can get the album off of, off of there. You can get the album uh, digitally on Bandcamp, their Bandcamp. I still have yet to put it up on our Bandcamp, but I'm going to do that very soon. And you can stream it on Spotify, uh, Apple Music, all the major streaming. And of course, our favorite way, you can come to a show and you can buy a record from us, which is the best way to do it, I think. Tell me about the the record, the actual physical record, because I understand Ripple Music has a couple special formats coming out. Yeah, there is a special edition variant. It's um, It's a clear yellow and red, and it looks sick. Those are, I believe, almost sold out. I think there is, I know they they have less than 10 left. I think we probably have less than 10 left. Uh, Even though the record just came out, uh, we played last week in Boston uh, with a bunch of sick bands. One of them is Mighty High. Band is awesome. And we sold a few there. So we're, we're pretty low on those. So if you want one, go on Ripple, go on their big cartel, and you can get one of the last ones. And if you're around here, you can get one from us. Um, hopefully we have some left by the time the April show comes around. 
And you can also just, we have plenty of the plain black and I think Ripple, I think they're pretty low on those as well. But the good news is we're going to do another pressing and probably some other cool color uh, for that one, which I don't know what that'll be yet. And if people want to follow Bone Church online, how can they do that? We have a Facebook page, our Instagram page, which is just uh, bone underscore church. And you can email us at bonexchurch at gmail.com. We don't have another website at this point. We are in the process of setting up a big cartel so we can get some of this merch up. And you can get an album f- directly from us at that point or CD or shirt or whatever. Is there anything else you want to say? I think this is a great time to be in underground music. I, you know, there's just so many good bands out there, new bands, new albums come out every day. Um, I think a lot of people hate on streaming music, but honestly, I have found out about so many incredible bands through Spotify, let's say. So I don't think it's a bad thing. You know, I think if you're out there and you're hustling and you're working hard as a band, then... I, that's the you know that's really the way to make progress. So I, I'm just we're just psyched to be uh, making music and just hope everybody digs it. Very cool. Thank you so much, Dan. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Church of God.